It's possible for anyone to dress well, so let's attack the seven most common excuses used to hold back your fits. I'm sick of money saving tips like buying cheaper alternatives, the essence sale, and constantly reselling your closet for new pieces. Let's think outside the box to get better fits and bank accounts. Time is money, so how can we effectively save some precious time? To put an end to doom scrolling TikTok and the explore page to stay up to date with trends, fashion newsletters are your solution. My favorite recommendations and insight come from Street Night Live. I take pride in sniping steals online, and the number one method starts with the proper first message. Always send a price lower than you think they'd actually sell for, say you'll pay immediately, leave them the best feedback they've ever gotten, and maybe the most crucial, always message sellers at night. People are more likely to end the day right by making some money, or say they miss it, they'll start the day off right with your offer. If you're funny, it 100% helps joking, otherwise just being polite is kind of a cheat code. Everyone into fashion is always searching for that next thing to buy and never seems fully satisfied. Building a uniform of solid staple pieces in your grails is 100% worth splurging on. Maybe it's because I started a job where I have to dress up, but I genuinely haven't had any urge to buy new clothing since repeating the fits I've come to enjoy. Surprisingly within my videos, I rarely see comments about being over or underweight yet height is a common concern. Height and body weight are easy to blame for making styling more difficult, yet some of the guys most commonly known for style inspiration aren't built like 6 foot skinny male models at all. For heavier guys you have Maddie Matheson and Jonah Hill, for shorter guys there's Robin Williams, Ralph, and Ye. All are examples that authentic style and strong taste are more sought after than a fashion standard body. If my content didn't revolve primarily around streetwear, I doubt I'd still see a lack of concern over body weight. The inclusiveness of streetwear is one of its biggest strengths compared to high fashion, where the set beauty standard of being tall and skinny plays into the exclusivity of itself as limited sizing can further filter their customer base. In order to effectively dress for your body type, you first have to understand your body type, which if you're like me, you're probably wondering how. Up first for what's helped me, we have fit picks, but very important, not this kind. We'll get to those later. These are used solely for better understanding our body. You want the camera at even height and chest level to make sure you don't distort how you look. As you know, fashion social media loves talking about proportions, the rule of thirds, and silhouettes, which comparing these pictures makes it much more easy to understand how those terms relate to yourself. Take note of your frame, torso length, legs, and body fat distribution. Using myself as an example to illustrate this, my shoulders are wider than my waist, which I can accentuate with tighter tops, or also play with oversized looks. With bottoms, I look for pants that sit at my waist or are a higher rise. Then I lean mostly towards straight fit, with more room in the thighs based on my body fat distribution. Also, if you're not taking measurements of your best fitting pieces, change that today. Save them as a guide and notes and reference it every time for future pickups. You may have also noticed the recurring comment saying, I could dress how I want if I was a celebrity, but what makes celebrities with great style or even just basic fits stand out? To start, there's an assumed confidence from celebrities based on their status and success. As previously seen from Austin Butler and Jeremy Allen White, the aura that comes with being a celebrity greatly improves how your fits are perceived, turning basic fits into GQ articles. The real secrets come from fashion's favorite form of expression, the fit pick. The commonality you'll notice between celebrity fit picks is they're usually not standing against a cement or brick wall that's become the social media standard and they look natural. Maybe it's just me, but a practical fit pick always looks better than a perfectly staged pose and lighting. So how do we appear to be so nonchalant? Rather than flicking up in front of the nearest wall, just go actually do things. Easy go-tos are riding a bike, being outdoors, or in an elevator. Instead of isolating the fit, the location enhances the overall picture. As far as poses, the iconic Willem Dafoe or hypebeast covering of the eyes immediately comes to mind, but these are too much for you, just keep it simple. You'll find the poses and fit picks come much more natural when you genuinely wear them out, rather than attempting to create the perfect post flexing your latest pickups. If you've watched TikTok at any point in your life, there's a great chance you've seen one of these. The trend was posting your fits with a caption along the lines of, you know your fits are fire when people say you're gay. In 2024, fashion has become so normalized as an interest, the perception of fashion being feminine or gay has definitely decreased yet is still there. 
This perception stems from stereotypes linking certain interests with sexual orientations and traditional gender norms, dictating that men shouldn't be overly concerned with their appearance. These connotations contribute to oversimplified and inaccurate perceptions of men interested in fashion and keep others hesitant to explore their interests within the way they dress. With ballet flats, painted nails, and skirts being divisive now, it'll be interesting to look back on this video even in just a couple of years to see if they're still seen the same. Something I've come to see in a new light is watches. As you most likely picked up from watching previous videos, I love movies. On my recent rewatch of the movie The Bourne Identity, Jason's watch really stuck out to me and made me get interested in owning a watch of my own. Once I created this image of owning my own watch, watches seemed to stick out more and more with whatever I was viewing. I wanted something practical that could be worn every day and with my daily fits. All this couldn't have come at a better time because Vare Watches reached out to partner with the channel. Vare's A3 Field Watch has checked all my boxes and been the perfect first watch. I went with the retro sizing and have been super glad with the way it looks on my wrist. The customizable feature between the straps are a huge benefit as well, making the watch extremely versatile for whatever activity I'm doing. I'm all about promoting quality products that are built to last for years of daily use and Vare's product range aligns with that perfectly. I appreciate Vair supporting the vision of the channel and genuinely becoming my favorite partnership to date. If you enjoy the videos, go check these guys out. One of the major anxieties of fashion that affects anyone, whether you're brand new or an accomplished vet, is the fear of appearing as a tryhard. The term typically referring to someone putting too much effort into their style and it coming off as attention seeking. Those just diving into the personal style rabbit hole definitely have it more difficult as when you're first getting into fashion, your image very noticeably changes, making even the smallest efforts noticeable. During this formative phase of finding your style, your choices don't always feel cohesive, leading to feeling like you're doing too much or inauthentic, which plays into the feeling of being a tryhard. When clothing comes off as inauthentic, the phrase wear your clothes don't let them wear you comes to mind, essentially meaning your clothes don't fit you, whether that's physically, aligning with your personality, taste, really whatever. So what's the solution? Well, you can master the art and crafted carelessness, paring down your fit to not seem overly thought out, whether that's utilizing distressed garments, rolled up sleeves, or any slight imperfections, but ultimately, is it really so bad to be seen as a tryhard? Almost anyone would agree that it's an attractive trait when someone shows they take care of themselves. Importantly, doing so without crossing into vanity suggests confidence and an understanding that while appearance is an aspect of your persona, it isn't the entirety. Whether you're obsessed with fashion or not, the struggle for social acceptance is universal. I find the idea especially interesting the more you get into fashion, the more of an isolating hobby it becomes. It's difficult to find friends who share a similar interest, whether they're in person or online connections, however once you do, they significantly enhance your style. Regardless of location, with fashion being a personal interest centered around image, we often overestimate the attention others pay to our appearance. In reality, whether they're great or garbage, nobody really cares about your fits. Without a social circle to provide this perspective, it's easy to internalize perceived judgments from others. If you enjoyed this video, go check out some more. I'll see you next time. Peace.